A huge thank you to our friend Shannon Glover for writing this review. Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. I've been impatiently waiting for the release of Forager on the Switch for what seems like a year now. Forager seemed to borrow many elements from Stardew Valley and Terraria while also drawing inspiration from Zelda. Will it make a name for itself amongst these popular titles or will it get lost in the shadows of its successful competitors? Let's find out. Our story begins with a little white alien-like creature on a small island with a pickaxe and a few nodes of ore and a few trees to break. And that's it. There is absolutely no backstory or explanation as to what your goal is. Some may be put off by this, but I was kind of relieved. I didn't have to sit through half an hour of some contrived story to get into the bread and butter of the game. Having just put around 60 hours into Dragon Quest Builders 2, with a third of that being storyline, this was a huge relief for me. Because there's no story, it wouldn't really be fair to score it, but I thought I'd let our viewers know because the lack of story or ultimate end goal might turn some people off. In my opinion, it works just fine here. Gameplay involves various elements of gathering, crafting and building while combining the ability to explore new islands. There's some combat, collecting goals and puzzles that also keep things interesting. Gathering starts out with a few basic items like berries, wood from trees and ore from nodes. As you gather, you'll gain XP or experience that will in turn level you up. Once you level up, you're awarded with one point to put into skill trees. The skill tree branches into four areas that comprise magic, foraging, where the name came from, industry, and economy. There are rather vague tooltips for each talent, but I believe it was enough to give you a general idea of what you were unlocking. Learning new skills or unlocking new types of buildings allows you to expand off the initial starting island. These islands can be purchased with coins that you learn to make and later can collect off of enemies and they can hold any number of intrigues, some of which are enemies, animals to collect resources from, new types of plants, a puzzle, a quest giver, or even a final dungeon. Never knowing what you were buying into was actually fun and added an air of mystery. While there are enemies, they were never so difficult or overwhelming that I felt irritated and in fact, they could stand to be more challenging, especially in the dungeons. I started out with three hearts and being hit by an enemy takes a heart away. If you die, you get a game over, which initially sent me into a huge panic, only to find out it just kicks you out to the starting screen and you can then load back into the game where you left off. A little bit odd. I'm very glad it didn't turn out to be a roguelike experience as I originally feared. The buildings in the game each serve a purpose and allow you to utilize all of those resources that you collect. Some of these can be eaten in order to increase your energy, which runs out fast, especially if you're putting in some hard work mining. I found this aspect of the game to be the most irritating. Having to eat so often when I was trying to grind just wasn't fun. But there are some upgrades later in the game that do help in this area and I was pleased to find that. While at first all of the collecting and gathering start to feel a touch tedious, the game does an excellent job at throwing in elements to keep each feeling fresh. I particularly enjoyed and appreciated the puzzles and riddles I discovered on New Islands. Even the quest givers changed it up a bit. Just when I got to the point where I thought this is going to take years, I unlocked a new item that drastically changed the game and sped things up. I don't want to give anything away because discovery was one of the most enjoyable aspects aspects of the game, but I feel like it did a wonderful job at improving upon those rather arduous tasks that I came to loathe in Stardew Valley. Before I knew it, I had put in 10 hours in a few days. I was hooked. I constantly wanted to expand the map and see what was around the next corner. There is even an aspect of the game, like the community center in Stardew Valley, where you can drop off items in a group and once you've completed the group you earn a prize that usually results in a quality of life update or item. There is a lot more to it than just farming and grinding and I think that's what I love about it. The only negative I can think of is that items and buildings have no item info. Later on in the game I acquired a scroll with a picture on it but not a clue as to what it did. I went ahead and used it and couldn't really tell what had just happened. I noticed I had a new two minute buff but wasn't really sure why or what it did. I don't necessarily need hand holding in a game like this, but a touch of item information wouldn't hurt, as I'd lost a lot of resources and time in that damn scroll. There are four different biomes to discover as you open up new areas of the map. These include fire, desert, crypt, and ice. The last island unlocked in a biome contains a dungeon that includes enemies, nodes, and plants unique to that biome. I encountered bombable walls, puzzles, and a final boss that were definitely reminiscent of my favorite dungeons from 
Zelda, I did feel like there wasn't a whole lot of challenge in the way of enemy difficulty, but that's my only real complaint. Controls were basic but intuitive, although they did require a little customization. When I first began the game, my pickaxe was mapped to X, while my item window was mapped to B. My brain had a hard time accepting this, so off I went to explore the control options, where I happily discovered that all buttons can be remapped to your choice. Phew, happy dance. It's worth noting that the controls cannot be mapped on the fly while in the game and you have to leave to the main menu, which is slightly annoying. Anyway, after swapping those two things, everything felt much better. Beside those two buttons, pressing A will interact with items and buildings, while R and L are used to toggle through your items slash weapons menu, and they're also used to select different buildings or exploration functions in the item menu. Additionally, the right stick can be used to dodge while in combat, and the Y button is used as a hotkey to quickly craft your max number of items for that given type. Gameplay is fun and very addictive, but it has a few minor quirks and still receives 17 out of 20. Meanwhile, the controls are simple, but exactly what they need to be, and they score 18 out of 20. Onto the visuals and audio. While the visuals use the now all too common pixel art style, it felt fresh here. Maybe it was the bright color palettes used to bring the biomes to life, or possibly the top down perspective, but I never felt put off or exhausted by yet another pixel art game, as is my initial reaction for a lot of the upcoming games on the eShop each week. If I had to nitpick a bit, I'd say the environments could have used more attention to really bring them to life. While the models of the characters, trees and rocks are nicely done, the islands themselves and the water feel a little lifeless in comparison, and I would have appreciated some small touches such as waves or blades of grass to suck me into the world that much more. The game performs great both docked and in handheld mode as well, the loading and saving times are extremely quick and I never noticed any lag or bugs. Overall the visual score 16 out of 20. To describe the sound soundtrack in Forager using one word, I would say it is pleasant. It's not intrusive and fairly relaxing, it's just not going to win any awards. I like that the track changes based on the zone type, and I was grateful that I wasn't forced to listen to the same track on loop for the entire game. The sound effects are fitting and you quickly learn what each sound signifies. Now that being said, as you start collecting much more ore and things, at a time later in the game, the sounds start to pile on top of one another like coins spilling out of a slot machine. It got to be too much and I had to retreat to the settings menu where I was, thankfully, able to turn the sound effects volume down. That's really my only issue there with the audio, but it was quickly remedied. While the audio doesn't detract from the experience, it doesn't exactly do anything special or unique, it is just good. It scores 14 out of 20. The game costs £17.99, €19.99 or $19.99 and it will take you roughly 15 hours to complete the game and maybe 20 plus hours for completionists. There's not a whole lot to do as far as post game content goes but one could restart this over and over and still have quite a bit of fun. I'm thinking I'm going to start a new game because I've learned a lot through trial and error and as the skill tree isn't linear I want to try putting points into different areas to maximize the benefits earlier in the game. The islands you unlock are also randomized so if you choose to play through the game again your map will look totally different. For all of that I highly recommend this game on the Switch for this price. While a game like Stardew Valley might have more to do overall I found Forager to be the more relaxing experience and one that is easier to hop in and out of whenever you want. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and it's fair to say I'm a little bit addicted. It's also worth noting that the developers have announced free DLC in the coming months that will add a new biome, multiplayer and refined combat among other things. For me value is a 17 out of 20. All in all, I wholeheartedly recommend Forager to those who love a good crafting experience, especially to those dedicated to Stardew Valley. I can only describe it as the perfect marriage of all my favourite types of games. There's a little bit of everything here, and while crafting and gathering takes up the majority of the game, puzzles, dungeons and exploration break up any potential monotony. Combine all of that with the fact that you can take this game along with you on the Switch and the whole experience is just positively delightful. Forager receives an overall Switch Up score of 82%. Thanks so much to Chan and Glover for that review, I really enjoyed it. Thanks to our patrons who support the channel every single month. Remember we give away a free Nintendo Switch game to the person most active on the channel. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch Up.
Cheers, guys. See ya.